Welcome to Improving On, a potential series in which I examine the game design problems some video games have and, you guessed it, improve on them. Today we have Paper Mario Sticker Star. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Despite me having childhood memories with this game, it's not good. Far from it, actually. It suffers from terrible game design, which is a hard thing to fix for obvious reasons. You can't just redesign a game that already exists. Or can you? That's right, in today's video, I'll be attempting to fix Paper Mario Sticker Star, God have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Trust me, it was hard, but nonetheless, let's get started. So, after some inspection, I've nailed down the game's three main problems. The battle system, the puzzles, and the game's story and characters. So. Let's begin in that order, starting with the battle system. It's no secret that Paper Mario Sticker Star's battle system is flawed. So when it comes to fixing it, it's quite tempting to give up and say, just use the old battle system. While, yes, that would do the job, that's not the point of the series. We're improving on, not replacing. So we'll have to stay within the confinements of Sticker Star's pre-established battle system. However, to fix something, you have to know what's wrong with it in the first place. So, what's wrong with Sticker Star's battle system? Here's the big one. Progression and levels. While in most RPGs it's done through experience points or whatnot, in Paper Mario Sticker Star you get hard containers by beating certain mini-bosses, get more space in your album by beating the main bosses, and get better abilities through new stickers. Now, it might not sound bad, in fact, I guarantee you this is probably the way the developers pitched the idea to Nintendo. However, it's extremely flawed. In every single RPG, there's a reason to fight enemies, even in games like Undertale and Deltarune, which don't even have experience points if you play through the pacifist route, they have an incentive to play through normal battles, and that's money, which you can spend in stores to get better equipment. In Sticker Star, it's sort of the same philosophy, getting money to spend on more powerful equipment and stickers. However, let me show you what really happens. You enter a battle and waste stickers in said battle. You then get coins to use in shops to get more stickers to use in future battles which you then waste in said battles and yeah, it's a vicious circle. <laughs> Basically meaning there's no point in fighting enemies. So how do we fix this? Well, it's actually surprisingly simple. Just add experience points. I know that sounds like a cop hat answer, but please bear with me. Adding experience points will require some major adjustments. Like, what would you upgrade if everything's done through story progression? Well, simply remove those. Seriously, no more hunt containers and no more book expansions by defending a boss. Thus, bosses defeated to acquire these will instead simply give away experience points, granting practically the same result. But what do you do when you level up? Well, in the older games, you could choose between upgrading health, flower points, or badge points. Here, we can keep health, and the stickers have a somewhat similar functionality with badges, more on that later, so increasing the sticker album storage space is also a good idea. However, that leaves us with one more thing, flower points. What will be this game's equivalent to flower points? Well, this is where my creative juices get to shine, and I'm glad to introduce... The Glutron 3000. This unique little gizmo will practically be the thing that fixes most issues this game has, I am not joking. With the Glutron 3000, the player will be able to glue stickers into Mario for more damage and other attributes. Which means that stickers will now function as items of some sort, powering up Mario's base jump and hammer attacks. I never quite understood why this wasn't the case in the original game. Like you can jump and hammer in the overall just fine, why not in battles? But now, in addition to your base jump and hammer abilities, you'll be able to glue the stickers into Mario. Think of it like the badges from older Paper Mario games. See, I told you we would get into that. However, this time, the badges are expendable items in the form of stickers. Thus, they will be a great supplement to Mario's base moveset, not a downright replacement. Another cool mechanic would be that by putting more glue into a sticker, it will power up that sticker, meaning that, for example, you can power up a normal jump sticker into a shiny jump sticker by spending more glue. 
Again, just like in the original games, with flower points and using more powerful badges. It's sort of like the paint mechanic from Color Splash, however here you use it to upgrade your stickers altogether. However, to prevent this mechanic from being broken, you can only power up a sticker one level, and then you'll have to use it as well during battle. So let's say you won't be able to simply stock up on infinity jumps. Also, I forgot to write this on the initial script, but once you level up, one of the other choices would be to increase the amount of glue the Glutron 3000 contains. So it'll be a matter of choosing to upgrade the amount of health, amount of glue, or amount of pages in the sticker album once you level up. In conclusion, with all of this, the player will never be out of moves, seeing as now the stickers serve as great upgrades to their arsenal. Also, there would actually be a reason to battle enemies with the whole experience points spiel. Also, also, give the player the ability to choose which enemy they want to attack. Doing it automatically, while it can be strategized around, is just unnecessary. But yeah, so far so good, right? Well, yes, but there's still a... Well, yes, but there's still a lot of... Well, yes, but there's still a lot of... Things to work on. Things. Oh boy. Anyone who has played Sticker Star knows what I'm going to complain about. They're practically key items, except that they're not and are actually completely optional, which you'll need in order to progress through the story, either by using them in the overworld or in battles. However, you can waste things really easily, so have fun going back to Toe Town in order to visit the Flingathing station all over again, only to realize you don't have the right sticker for the boss battle, having to go back and collect the thing, and then go back again to Toe Town and visit the Flingathing station to turn the thing into a sticker and... <sighs> Who thought this was a good idea? Have things that are important to story progression marked with a star or something. At least then people will know not to waste a thing sticker. Or perhaps have the big stickers be required for story progression and the small stickers being optional special moves. Perhaps you could use the Glutron 3000 in order to turn them into stickers, making it more useful and not having to visit the Flinga thing station every 5 minutes. Literally anything is better than what we have here. Yo, post-production George here, I feel like going into a bit more detail with the ideas I just mentioned, starting with the thing sticker priority thing. Basically, the big stickers, like I said, are mandatory for progression, the small stickers are completely optional, being special moves the player can execute whenever they want, and the medium stickers are ones that can be useful in later battles, aka, let's say, having fire stickers in the Ice Bowser fight. I forgot there were medium-sized stickers in the game, so I'm just clearing that up. Also, you'll be able to use the Glutron 3000 to turn things into stickers during the battle as well. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, let's continue. Also, yeah, the boss fights suck. Most boss fights in this game follow this pattern. Weaken them for a bit, then they do something that makes you unable to hit them. So you have to use a thing sticker on them to automatically beat them, otherwise you're dead. I don't think I need to say why that's bad game design. The plus curse doesn't even hint towards what sticker you'll need until after you fought the boss once. The solution to all this. Have the things you need always be accessible during battles, unable to waste them for any reason. Have tours to prevent the player, or at least guide them to the right direction. If what I suggested by having the Lutron 3000 be used to turn things into stickers... Well, yeah, if that's used, that would fix one of the biggest problems with the game. You could turn things into stickers during battle, or perhaps some of them, or anything. Seriously, there's a crap ton of ways you can fix this system, and they chose none of them. So, to recap, the player will always have access to every single thing they've collected, marked with a star in the things menu if they'll be required for story progression. Once they're needed, the player can use the Glutron 3000 in order to turn that thing into a sticker, which they can then use. Much simpler than having the whole backtracking into Totan fiasco, right? And how about this? If you have to, for whatever reason, go back to Toad Town for shopping purposes or whatnot, you can make the Glutron 3000 have a phone line of some sorts, allowing the player to call any shop they'd like from whenever. The only caveat being that they'll have to pay extra for the delivery fee, thus giving some value to going to the shops themselves from Toad Town. 
This would at least eliminate the backtracking problem, so if the player was to waste a specific thing sticker, they could easily call up the thing a thing station, or the toad in the back alley to prepare a thing sticker for them, or even perhaps call up the sticker shop to buy more stickers. Either way, it will be an easy, a concise system that eliminates the need for backtracking. Okay, so Paper Mario Sticker Star, just like any other RPG, has puzzles, and they all suck. They're either too cryptic, too annoying to solve, too hard to find without a guide, or all of the above. Point being, the puzzles suck, and unfortunately, that's the part of the game I cannot find an easy solution for. Why? Because puzzles are different. You can't fix a puzzle by adding a new gear on it or something, you will need to redesign the entire puzzle, and for the interest of time and of my own sanity, I'll refrain from doing so. Just note that the puzzles being bad is a uniform problem which stays consistent for most of the game. However, what we can fix is one of the ways the game proposes puzzles. And while we're not going to look at specific cases, this is a mechanic that, again, absolutely sucks. So, paperization. It's a mechanic with which you can pretty much stick things back into the world. It's a neat idea, in concept, however it's really badly utilized. First off, it's not always obvious when the player is supposed to paperize. The game presents it as a, if things look suspicious, you'll most likely need to paperize. What it actually means is that you'll need to paperize every 5 seconds to make sure you don't miss something. Sometimes the puzzle isn't what sticker I'll need to use, but instead where the hell I'm even supposed to paperize in the first place. So make the fact I'll need to paperize things a bit more obvious, and also don't waste the player stickers if they don't paperize the correct ones. This will just lead to more frustration and backtracking, and it's just not a fun mechanic. And that's about it for paperization. Yeah, it's a bad mechanic that's used in like two ways, both of which have made it clear how they could be improved. Thus, that only leaves one more issue with Paper Mario Sticker Star still left unsolved. The story and characters. So, it's fair to say that Paper Mario Sticker Star doesn't have the best story, nor characters. Although I feel like the argument of, it's a Mario game, it doesn't need a story, is heavily flawed, the story Sticker Star presents isn't even passable by Mario standards. It has an interesting concept with the sticker festival and wishes and the guardians of the sticker comment, it's just that none of these are used at all to great effect. But let's quickly talk about the characters first. We all know about the Origami King interviews, so I'm not going to waste your time. The developers are unable to modify our existing characters or add completely new ones to the games. Although I think that's total bullcrap, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, and show how they could have gone around the issue if they actually cared. Just search up Mario characters on Google and you'll- WOW! Yeah, the list is massive! Meanwhile, Sticker Star uses like, four! And even the toad variety problem. Previous Paper Mario games have introduced various types of toads. Just reuse those! Cheat the system a little! They're predefined characters, you're not modifying or adding anything new. Also, Bowser. Fun fact, he has zero dialogue in the entire game. Bowser is one of the best written characters in every single Mario RPG, even in Origami King. Here, however, they did my boy dirty. Plus, Kirsty is really annoying, she constantly complains about everything and everyone, just like I'm doing in this video, and has little to no help to provide to lost players, unlike what I'm doing in this video. A rewrite is surely necessary here. So you know what? Screw it! I'll stick to the limitations of the current story, I'll present my idea for a story that not only heavily limits itself to be an upgrade to the original, but also provides not only interesting character developments, but also an interesting plot and a villain you can sort of relate to by the end. Allow me to present my Paper Mario Sticker Star story. <clears throat> Inside his castle, Bowser is sitting on his throne, lost in thought. Angry at his past failures, He's left with just one wish, to finally destroy Mario. The Sticker Festival is happening soon, known to house the one and only Sticker Comet, a powerful object which can grant any wish. Although, his wish would never come true, no matter how hard he tried. Soon, however, a mysterious figure would enter the throne room, presenting themselves as a fallen guardian of the royal stickers, thirsty for revenge. 
Bowser, intrigued by the figure's sudden appearance, insists to continue their spill. Her offer? Grant Bowser's wish to become powerful enough to not only destroy Mario, but the entire Mushroom Kingdom as well. In exchange, Bowser will have to invade the upcoming Sticker Festival and smash the Sticker Comet into pieces, scattering the royal stickers across the land, forcing their old friend to come out and play. Bowser, desperate to finally get what he's wanted for years, accepts the figure's request. However, unbeknownst to him, the figure's plan wouldn't be as simple. We cut to the Sticker Festival, as toads gather around ready to get their wishes granted. Princess Peach, alongside Mario, proudly pull the curtains and reveal the one and only Sticker Comet falling down from the sky. However, before it gets the chance to land, a cannonball flies into it and smashes it into smithereens. Everyone stares at the sky, shocked at what just happened. However, the chaos would only begin. Airships can be seen flying into frame as Bowser stands on top of one of the airships. However, he looks off. His face is expressionless, while his eyes have turned bright red. Weirdest of all, a shining golden crown stands atop his head. He commands his minions as they soon fall onto the ground and start folding everyone around. He jumps down as well as a fight between him and Mario commences. However, Mario's attempts are futile. Bowser is too strong and takes Mario out with ease. As the screen fades away, Bowser can be heard laughing maniacally as his mission turned out to be a success. The intro remains roughly the same as Mario is woken up by Kirsty, a floating tiara, one of the protectors of the sticker comet. The rest of the game progresses as usual, with Mario restoring some of the ruined Toad Town and him heading off to an adventure to collect the royal stickers. As for the rest of the game, instead of fighting Kamek, you fight Kami Koopa, who was Bowser's advisor in the old Pepe Mario games. It just makes more sense to keep that in line with the rest of the series. However, what's cool about these fights is that, as time goes on, they grow from showing slight concern for Bowser to them outright believing something is wrong with him. However, we now skip to the endgame, where instead of Flutter helping us go to the floating Bowser's castle, it's Bowser Jr. and Kami Koopa, both looking uncertain. Their goal is to defeat Mario, that's what Bowser has ordered them to do. However, they know that the Bowser commanding them is not the real Bowser. While Kirstis shows hesitance, Mario is kicked to comply and reassures the tiara. Thus, an uneasy alliance is soon formed, where Bowser Jr., Kami Koopa, and Mario fly towards Bowser's castle, inside Jr.'s clown car. On their way, they find a bunch of Bowser's airships with the rest of his minions, who call them out as traitors for working with Mario. They fire at Bowser Jr.'s clown car, taking it down as our trio crashes into the airship. With Mario being the only one withstanding the crash, with Bowser Jr. and Kami Koopa staying behind, the airship level commences. However, this time, instead of fighting Bowser Jr. at the end, you fight a commander minion, who can honestly be any one of Bowser's minions, just set as the commander. <laughs> Either way, they're taken down easily, and soon Mario and Kirsty make it to Bowser's castle. Bowser's castle is mostly the same, just without the Kamek boss fight because it sucks. Nothing but a simple walk through the quiet, eerie, and mostly empty Bowser's castle. Kirsty is one to remark upon this, wondering what has happened to the place. However, their questions would soon be answered once they entered Bowser's throne room. The door slowly opens as the duo is on edge. On the other side of the room lies Princess Peach, who has managed to break out of her imprisonment. She notices Mario and wears an anxious look on her face. She tells Mario to leave now before he finds them. However, she is soon cut off by rambling as Bowser soon jumps into frame, looking more fearsome than before. Kirsty tells Peach to run away as Sharon and Mario approach the intimidating Bowser. Kirsty, however, notices something peculiar about him. That crown on top of his head, is that? Before they're cut off by a mysterious voice coming from Bowser's mouth. Long time no see, Kirsty, says Bowser. Kirsty is shocked, slowly approaching him. Stenfen? Which, by the way, is an anagram of unfasten, you know, the opposite of stick. Plus, Stefani is one of the Greek words for a leaf chaplet, which was pretty much the ancient Greek equivalent to a crown. The more you know. 
Anyways, <clears throat> Stanfan greets the duo, leaving Mario confused. However, Kirsty is quick to ask questions. What did you do to Bowser? She asks, with Stanfan reassuring her. Don't worry about him, old friend. He's but a puppet to me now. A nice vessel, wouldn't you say? Mario confronts Kirsty about him. However, Stanfan takes the lead and tells the story himself. He was once a guardian of the Sticker Comet, just like Kirsty, an object of unlimited power, able to grant any wish. While Kirsty would only grant good wishes, Stenfun would have a different outlook. He wanted to use the power of the Sticker Comet to grant people's bad wishes, rain havoc upon the land. However, his obsession over said power would be noticed by Kirsty, as she would soon banish him to the Mushroom Kingdom, forced to aimlessly wander the place he once was supposed to protect. Angry, filled with rage, he would construct one simple goal. Revenge. Thus, he would trick Bowser into becoming a vessel, so that he could take back the power that he once owned. And now, standing in front of Mario himself, he has no intent on stopping now. The battle goes on as it does in the original game. However, with the stupid sticker, puzzles removed or at least heavily tweaked. And soon, after a climatic battle was over, Bowser was defeated once more. Stenfen, flying off his head, falls to the ground alongside him. Drawing his final words, he reveals to Mario the truth that once the Guardian of the Sticker Comet dies, they turn into a royal sticker. So, may your wish come true, Mario, he says before transforming into a royal sticker himself. Mario soon collects. Holy shit, my throat hurts from all of that. Wow. I could gush about how much I love this story I've made. Like I said, it sticks to the basic idea, doesn't do anything wild, but has enough depth to allow the player to ponder. Does that mean the real stickers we collect are the remnants of long gone guardians? Who knows? But still, I really like this! Of course, it's not perfect, as I haven't even touched the mid-game, but I think this is a decent groundwork at the very least. I try to refrain from going too fanfiction-y, or just too serious of a plot, and I think they did a pretty good job. Tell me what you think in the comments, I'd love to see your feedback. But that about does it for this video. I have to say, this was quite fun to work on. As fun as it is to talk about the problems many games have, it's equally as fun to try and come up with solutions to said problems. And that's what I want out of this potential series, you know? Keep in mind that I am working on a lot of other projects, like Project Revival, which I swear I'll show more of in the future. Plus, I also want to get more into drawing and game design. And at the very least, this video helped me out with that. So unless I decide to just quit YouTube and start streaming or something, I guess I'll see you all in the next video. Stay hydrated, everyone. So, yeah, I guess now is the time for me to do the YouTuber thing. Uh, remember to like the video, subscribe, comment and all that. I've got some cool non-YouTube projects cooking up, so stay tuned for those if you want. I've also got a Twitter, where I usually post various art or other stuff I'm working on, so if you enjoyed the illustrations I made for this video, you can follow me there for more. But yeah, I'm nearly out of ideas for this channel, just as fast as I came back, I'm already dry. So I don't know, worst case scenario, I might start streaming in September, probably gaming or drawing streams to be exact, so let me know if you'd be into that. These videos take a long time to make, a time which I could use to work on my own games and stuff, you know? Streaming will definitely take less of my time away, but still, I enjoy making these videos, don't get me wrong. Just tell me what you all think in the comments, I make sure to read every single one. So, yeah, that's about it. See you all next time, bye! With the Glutron 3000, the player will be able to- fuck. With the Glutron 3000, the player will be- fuck. <laughs> With the Glutron 3000, the player will be- I can't speak.